astronauts, a biomechanical study. Appropriate suture selection has a profound impact on wound healing, infectious risk, and scar formation. While suture selection is often made on the basis of training experience, it is important for surgeons to understand the characteristics of various sutures. There are many suture characteristics, most notably absorbability, elasticity, plasticity, memory, coefficient of friction, tensile strength, and physical configuration. These are all important factors that can have varying effects on tissue ischemia, tension, microbial infectivity, as well as tissue reactivity. Prior studies have assessed tensile strength of suture material and their different knot security profiles in regards to the effect on skin closure and wound breakdown. There is one notable study that has investigated the optimal number of suture knots needed to optimize knot security using various suture materials. They found that four suture knots was the ideal number to confer the most tensile strength, after which more knots did not alter the strength. While this study compared four different suture materials, they only used O-gauge size suture and only square knots. This study expands on previous research by looking at not only the type of suture, but size of suture and type of knot by comparing a sliding knot and a surgeon knot. The purpose of this biomechanical study was to compare the tensile strength of using a sliding and surgeon knot on various suture materials. Six different sutures were tested, 2 monocryl, 2 ethylon, 3 ethylon, 2 PDS, a number 2 vicryl, and a 2 vicryl. Each suture was tested using either a sliding knot or a surgeon's knot with two, three, or four knot throws performed by hand. To test the strength of various knots and sutures, an Instron servo hydraulic test machine equipped with a 250 Newton load cell was used. The suture was looped over two 6.35 millimeter diameter rods placed 20 millimeters apart, as seen in the picture on the bottom left. After the knot was tied, a five Newton preload was placed on the loop for five seconds. The loop was then perpendicularly tensioned at one millimeter per second until the knot slipped, detected by a drop in load or the suture broke. The load was recorded at 100 hertz with a wave matrix data acquisition software. The outcomes measured were either peak load when slipping, knot failure, or peak load when the suture broke, suture failure. Test failure was defined as either knot or suture failure. In the analysis of our results, six different sutures were analyzed of varying sizes using both a surgeon knot and a sliding knot. The analysis looks at several factors including knot type, surgeon compared to sliding, as well as number of throws, two, three, or four. Combinations of these factors were assessed to determine any confounding factors. Graph one represents all suture and knot types, showing that four knots had the maximum load compared to two and three knots. Graph 2 incorporates the number of throws as well as the type of knot, and this shows that four surgeon knots to have the highest maximum load. Graph 3 is the comparison of maximum load based on suture type and number of throws, not surprisingly showing that number 2 vicryl was the strongest. And then graph 4 is a graph of the mean trend of the maximum load for number of throws by knot type, showing that a surgeon knot to be better than a sliding knot. Tensile strength is defined as the force a material can withstand before breaking. For this study, knot failure was defined as suture breaking or knot slipping, as this would constitute failure within the context of wound closures. The results showed on average for all suture that four knot throws provide sufficient tensile strength leading to prolonged period prior to knot failure when compared to two or three throws alone. An important aspect of this study is the different suture material used. Each suture has different properties that make the selection of suture in the operating room important for types of wounds. Whilst the extent of knot characteristics is vast, our study focuses on two of these characteristics, knot security and tensile strength. This study does not intend to assert in which situation these, situa these sutures should be used, but purely to assess the strength and knot security across various suture materials. There are limitations to the study, including the intra-observer error from surgeon experience. In effort to minimize confounding factors, only one personnel was used to tie the suture. Additional limitations include ex vivo study, as this cannot replicate wound healing potential for in vivo subjects. A future aim of this study is to increase the power analysis yield with more testing of each suture and varying suture size. Ultimately, this study reinforces that four knot throws reaches optimal tensile strength and knot security prior to knot or suture failure. Furthermore, this study shows that surgeon knot has an increased maximum load compared to a sliding knot. Currently, there is no standardized number of throws required per suture material. However, we conclude that four knot throws are sufficient for all tested suture material. 
Additional knot throws can increase the risk for suture prominence, especially in areas of thin, soft tissue coverage and for microbial infection. Thank you.